right, everybody. We are doing part two of love. So, uh, part one, we talked about what is love. And um, I pretty much kind of bursted everybody's bubble about what love is and what true love is. And so part two is going to be talking about what is love and what is the likelihood of um, love lasting through um, those who have uh, been afflicted or who have gone through an affair, um, those that have gone through um, one or both that are going through addictive behaviors. And so... Um, that is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, when I used to run groups, everybody used to have the same, um, exactly the same question. And one of the questions was, can love last when going through one of these major things, right? Um, addiction. An affair and lying. Um, those are always the big ones, um, especially the affair one and the addiction ones. And my answer always was, do you want me to lie to you or do you want me to tell you the truth? Um, the reason I say that is because the statistics, if you want to look up the statistics, the statistics are not, the statistics are very good, you know. And so, um, and, and the reason for that is because it's, it, the stats are like anything else, right? If you really think about statistics, I mean, I've, I've done statistics. I mean, I've done research. I'm on my second doctorate, you know what I mean? So what you do is you get the, the statistics that you need to prove your hypothesis you know and so really if you look at statistics uh, it's just like with addiction it it's 60 percent as far as relapse rates but it's no different than any other uh, type of behavior that is you're looking for a lifestyle change right so that would be the same thing so say for example for hypertension type 2 uh, Hypertension, diabetes type 2, asthmatics, anything that requires a lifestyle change, the statistics fall within 50 to 70 percent-ish, something like that. Addiction falls at 60 percent as far as relapse. Reason for that is because you're asking for them to, you know, everything they've ever known in your life, they have known. You're asking them to do the exact opposite. So if you're sitting down with somebody who has been doing their behavior for the last 20 years and you're saying, hey, change it, stop, they're going to look at you like, what? Are you serious? You know, it's the same thing. You know, the statistics are really bad. You know, it's, very, it's not that great, in other words. In a fair, if you think about it, it's just kind of the same kind of thing. You know, people ask me all the time, is an emotional affair worse than a sexual affair as far as like the physical thing? Well, what do you think? You know, what's your what's your point of view on that? I mean, everybody has different points of view. Um, the reality is most people who actually did the affair, most people will say that I ask, they'll say, I can tell you in my view, their view, they will tell me the emotional affair is way worse than the sexual physical affair because the physical act is just an act. The emotional thing is a lot different because I actually got connected to them. So how do I tell my wife or my husband that, you know, the physical thing was a whatever, but me having the ability to call that person at any given time, have them tell me that they love me, they care about me, they care about what I say, you know, they're actually taking the time to sit down and talk to me and they're actually telling me they care about what I think is important to me. You know, all of a sudden, I'm not going to have that person telling me that I'm important to them. I never got that from my spouse. And now all of a sudden, that's gone. I would have much rather 
just had the sex with them and not had the emotional thing because now I can, you know, I can pull the cord and I'm done. Like the emotional thing was way more important to me and now I won't have that person in my life anymore. How am I supposed to get through life now? My husband and my wife never did that for me. The emotional affair is way more hard to get over than the physical thing, in my opinion. And based on what I've always asked throughout the years, from the person that did the affair, they also say the same thing. Um, lying is just as hard, right? Because how do you, your whole relationship is based off of trust. So if you believe, if you're going with that logic, right? You, you know, the relationship is based off of trust and then that person has broken your trust. How are you supposed to, what boundaries or what are you going to, parameters are you going to put in place so that you can then start trusting that person so that this lying thing can be changed. It's very hard, but you have to figure out what that looks like. And for some people in my practice, this entails putting apps on the person's phone so they can track them. I've had people who tell me, oh, I've been with them long enough to know and they're lying to me and bullshitting me, so it doesn't even matter. You know, I've had people that say, there's no coming back from that. You know, like lying is lying is lying. Like an addict is an addict is an addict. And so how do you work with somebody to repair a relationship when they say like the, the trust has been broken, you know? And so can love last? Well, and what I tell everybody, so getting back to my, uh, the question and the answer is, I always tell them, don't follow the statistics. Follow you. Because it's more important on what are you going to do to do to fix these issues. Because the, t the stats is the stats. But if you are willing and able to change your situation, and if your partner is willing and able to change the situation on their end, then the stats doesn't matter. What matters is that you're willing to change the situation and you're willing to work on it. That's what freaking matters. And in fact, you may go through all of this, both of you. So you guys do your individual counseling and you guys do what you guys resentments, guilt, shame, whatever. And then you guys come in every couple of weeks and you guys do your guys family counseling, right? And then after everything's all said and done, you guys may realize that we weren't good for each other anyway. And you guys may end up breaking up amicably. And you guys may end up becoming friends at the end. And that's not a bad thing either. As long as you guys realize that you guys did it and you guys agreed when you guys did it. You know, that's not a bad thing. What that means is that you guys are learning, growing, and changing for the positive. You know, people, that's one of the things that when they first come into counseling is that a lot of it is fear. Why is it fear? Because you start to realize that, holy crap, when I walk into those doors, I may change. And when I change, shit happens when you start changing. You know, and that's the real true reality of counseling, is that what stops and hinders a lot of people from walking through these doors, is that they realize that when change happens, I can no longer deny the fact that I got shit to work on. And once I start working on that, I can no longer deny that I'm in a dysfunctional situation anymore. That's it. Like I got to shed or get off the pot. You know that kind of thing. I, I have cannot deny that there's situations at hand that I got to start working on. That's the reason a lot of people choose not to come in. The other reason is that unfortunately they may have encountered some seriously bad therapists or situations or you know things may have occurred where they've tried it and it didn't work out. Whatever the case might be, you know, change will happen. You know, it's inevitable. The only constant in life is change. You know, and a lot of times people hear that and they're like, oh, God, change, you know, who wants that? But change is good. I mean, that's a good thing, you know. So anyway, getting back to love and will love last. That's what my thought process is when I used to run groups. That's what I used to tell people. You know, make it a point. If you really want it, and if you really want to keep that relationship going, 
That's what you need to focus on. Focus on sitting down together as a couple and determining what is the goals that we want, what is it that we're looking at, and how are we going to focus on getting to that end result. That's what you guys need to focus on. So this is the blog for the week. Um, that's my thoughts in regards to can love last when it comes to these major issues. Um, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns in regard to this, like how I always say, please comment. Please email me if you have any questions. Until next week, be well and have a great week. And then the rainstorm came over me. And I felt my spirit break